Now a look at Secure Logic's health monitoring and alerting utility, Logical Health Check Pro. It's a tool to reduce maintenance requirements whilst improving support performance, offering a level of proactive maintenance not seen before in the industry. Following the session, you'll be prompted to join the live Q&A. Hi, I'm Robin Hughes, co-founder and evangelist at Secure Logic, the security industry's leading manufacturer of IT hardware specifically designed and optimized for HD surveillance and video analytics applications. Whilst we're primarily known for our hardware, in today's tech talk, we'll be talking about our award-winning health monitoring alerting utility, Logical Health Check Pro. After a brief introduction to Secure Logic, I'll hand over to my colleagues, Ben and Robert, who will give you a guided tour of the software and will be available for questions and answers after the presentation. So a little bit about Secure Logic. Secure Logic were founded in 2011 to fill in the missing piece of the HD surveillance jigsaw. And that is servers specifically designed and optimized for HD surveillance. So historically, customers have selected best of breed cameras and best of breed VMS and used a commercial off the shelf server as the engine for the system. The real differential between us and our competition is that our executive team have over 100 years in IP surveillance experience and IT hardware experience, giving us the edge. We understand not just the server we're selling you, but the entire system. Our vision was to create not just a new brand name, but a new product group in CCTV, specialist servers optimized for HD surveillance. And our tagline is that we have the fastest performance, the biggest storage, the most resilience and the best value in IT hardware in the security industry. So what is Logical Health Check? Logical Health Check Pro is our in-house health monitoring and alerting utility that ships with all secure Logic hardware. Logical Health Check Pro is a tool to reduce maintenance requirements whilst improving support performance, offering a level of preemptive maintenance not seen before in our industry. The software will monitor all processes and components within our hardware and will create an alert in the event of abnormal operation, temperature or component losses. So let's see the product. Over to you, Ben. Hi, I'm Ben, Sales Director at Securelogic, and I'm going to take you through our Logical Health Check Pro dashboard. This dashboard is set up for a systems integrator. The dashboard is split into two main areas. On the left, you have a systems tree containing a list of your customers. On the right, you have a map showing you their locations. All of the icons of the map and the system tree are color coded. Gray means something is offline. Green means everything is okay. Amber means you have a warning and red means you have a critical alert. The software is designed to take you from the dashboard to any piece of harbor in three clicks. But if you know a site name or a harbor ID, you can get there even quicker by adding it in the search bar. I'm going to take you to look at a piece of harbor and I'm going to use the system tree to explain how it works. If we select a customer, we get a list of sites allocated to that customer. We can then select a site and we get a list of hardware that's installed at that site. If I then select a piece of hardware, you get our component monitoring screen. From top left to bottom right, we are monitoring the CPU, drives, both SSD and HDD, network traffic, system temperatures, memory, also known as RAM, graphics cards, power supplies, and fans. Some items like our hard drives have a sub menu. Clicking on this icon brings up more detailed information about those items. All of the items on the screen are being monitored in real time. When something changes state and pushes it through its threshold to a warning or an alert, we can automatically trigger an email or an SMS to be sent. Rob's gonna talk a bit more about how we do that in a second. If we look at this piece of hardware, everything's currently okay. If we pull the power supply, the power supply icon goes red. This color propagates up through the menu to the very top of the dashboard, including the maps to, to alert you that something is wrong. If we now replace this hard drive, the icon will go back to green, again propagating through the menus so that everything in the system tree is now green. This shows you that everything has been fixed on this site. Over to Rob to talk about system settings and configuration. Hi, I'm Rob Blay, product manager. 
Now we've had the introduction from Robin and looked through some of the features with Ben, we're gonna dive right into some of the configuration and take a peek under the hood and see how everything works. Now I think you'll agree by the end of this section that the health check software and interface is incredibly easy to use and very intuitive. We're gonna start initially by looking at the server-side application. Now the server-side application is great because you don't have to do anything. You don't have to install anything, you don't have to configure anything. It'll all be done for you in the factory when we build the server. Now, the server-side application can be found in the system tray next to the clock, typically in the bottom right-hand corner of your screen. When you open the application, it will give you an easy indication of the status of the server, whether it's running or stopped. It also gives you the facility to start and stop the service from running if you need to. You'll also notice in this window that you see the server serial number, which can be very useful if you're speaking to our technical support team. Now what the server-side application does is it gathers all of the component information in the server, CPU temperature, uh, the amount of processing it's doing, power consumption, status of the power supplies, all of this useful information, it gathers it together, packages it, and sends it off encrypted to the cloud server. Once it's at the cloud server, that gives you the facility to view all of that information and create thresholds and alerts through the web browser. Now, we'll touch a little bit more on how the encryption and the cybersecurity side of things work towards the end of this section. Now, Health Check Pro was created with the intention of allowing you to monitor many pieces of server hardware deployed in the field from a single location. So as you can imagine, as you get tens or even hundreds of servers on the system, it becomes very important to organize them in a way that allows you to find a server very easily. So what we'll do is we'll just create a new group site and add some devices to it right now. So creating a group, you'll give it a name and typically that will be the customer name. In this example, we're gonna use Fast Shipping Global. And once we've created the group, it will now show up on the dashboard and we can add a site to it. Sites are typically geographical locations. So in this example, we'll give it a couple of depots in Germany and Spain, for example. You'll also see that when we're creating these sites, we have the ability to add a location of the server on a map. This is really useful because then the location of the server will show up on the dashboard map for easy access. Now we've created the sites, we can go ahead and add our devices to a specific site. You can add one or as many devices as you like into a specific geographic location. As you can see on the screenshot here, it's just a matter of selecting the devices you'd like and adding them to the site. Once this is done, we'll go back to the dashboard and providing all the servers in that site and in that group are working correctly the group should show up green. But let's say it doesn't. Let's say we have a amber warning. And we've created one of those here, just for an example. We can drill into the group that's not green. Then we can find the site that's also not green. And in there, we'll find the server that's causing our problem. We can bring the information up full screen and identify which component or components are creating the error. No two server installations are alike. The servers will be in different comms room with different levels of air conditioning, not to mention the fact that the servers will be running different applications. On one hand, you might have a server that's running a basic access control suite, and just a database. And on the other, you might have a server that's running a video analytics platform with many HD video cameras coming in. So for that reason, we've created fully customizable thresholds that could be individually applied to a server or applied across many servers as a profile. This is extremely useful to help prevent false alarms. 
because what will work with the video analytics server won't work with the access control server and vice versa. So let's have a quick look at the threshold screen. Now, as you can see, we've got a number of tabs here, ranging from everything from CPU usage and temperature all the way through to power consumption and the status of the power supply. It's very simple to adjust the thresholds here. You've got a warning and a critical level. If the temperature, for example, on the CPU exceeds the warning level, then the server is going to show up as orange in the, in the hierarchy tree. If it exceeds the critical level, then it'll show up as red. Some, some components don't have levels. For example, if a hard drive fails, that's immediately a critical alert. And you'll see in this window here, this is where you can set whether you want an email to be sent or an SMS. As I mentioned earlier, typically most people use email as you can receive these on your phone just as easy as an SMS and it's easier to configure. It can also be sent to multiple devices if needed. Now, while we're talking about alerts, why don't we jump in and have a quick look at the email configuration side of things. Setting up Health Check to send email alerts is very easy. Simply open the email settings, and here you'll be required to put in your email server details. This will be the email address the alerts are sent from, and you should be able to acquire all of this information from your IT department. Once you've inputted this information and saved it, now you can go in and set the alerts and the notifications and which email address you want them to be sent to. It can be a single email address or multiples. There is an SMS feature in here, and if you wish to use it, it requires a third party API. Please get in touch and we can talk you through it. So let's move on to security. Cybersecurity. This is typically the burning question that's on everyone's mind when we talk about HealthCheck Pro. How secure is it? Well, let me start by telling you that all the way from your server that's on site running HealthCheck to our cloud server and all the way to the browser in which you're viewing this information on is fully encrypted with SSL. This is the same level of encryption that you use when you log into your online banking. You'll be able to see it at the top of your browser as and it will show as a little padlock when you connect to the site. What the encryption means is it's almost impossible for anyone to intercept your data, be it your passwords or any unique uh, information for your account. Even if they do intercept the data, they have no way of decrypting it without the server side key. And that's unique to us and we keep it secure. And it cycles every few months as well to keep it even more secure. If it does get compromised, it will just be a case of us updating our certificate early. Another thing to note is that there is no way to remotely connect into HealthCheck Pro from the outside. The application running on your server is hard coded to only send the data to our cloud server and nowhere else. There is no way of dialing in and there is no open ports that will accept an incoming connection. This means in your firewall, if you like, you only have to allow outgoing connections from HealthCheck Pro to our cloud server. It's two ports, and for more information on those ports, please get in touch and we can provide you all the information you need. Now on the client viewing side of things, we have user management controls, and typically there'll be one or two admins in the company that will control all of the users um, that have access. Now there's nothing special that goes on here, and we strongly advise that you use proper protocols for creating passwords. Eight to 12 digit passwords, using both upper and lowercase letters, as well as numerical digits. The more secure you can keep your password and more regularly you change it, the safer you will be. Super. So it uh, looks like we already have people joining. Thank you very much for, uh, for joining us today for these IFSEC Tech Talks. We'll be starting in just a moment. What we want to do is give everyone an opportunity to join. I know it 
takes a moment or two for everyone to skip over from presentation to the Q&A, but uh, it's a busy old day of uh, presentations and Q&A sessions, and that's what we are embarking on in just a moment, and I'm delighted that Rob and Robin uh, are, are here to join us from Secure Logic. So, uh, perhaps... Hi there. So perhaps just while you are, well, while our guests are joining us, um, for anyone who wasn't watching the uh, product tech talk demo um, that, that was on just a moment ago, perhaps you could just give us a kind of 10 mile view of what it is that you've been talking about with uh, Secure Logic and Logical Health Check Pro. Okay, well, uh, uh, Logical Health Check Pro is, is um, a free software that ships with all Secure Logic hardware. And essentially it's a health monitoring and alerting utility. So um, what it does, it sits there and monitors every process and every component and the temperature of our servers. And in the event that something abnormal is going on, it will um, uh, send an alert. So we either have a GUI, a graphical user interface that will sit on any device. So a web browser, a mobile phone, a tablet, um, or we can send emails, SMS messages, in the event that something's going wrong. Um, on the graphical user interface, um, the system, the software is really designed for, for our customers, the integrators, to, to offer the best level of support to the end user. So on the graphical user interface, um, we essentially have a map and a list of tabs, and the integrator can um, sort their customers into tabs. So you might have um, Ford garages, DHL, etc and if they come in in the morning and they got a full suite of green lights that means that, that everything's good everything's fine all the all the hardware in the field is, is is great and then we have a traffic light system so for instance if there's an amber light that sort of implies that, that there's something needs looking at it could be something relatively minor um or if there is a red light that's probably something you need to look at more importantly so a red light might occur if for instance you've got a hard drive gone down etc um, all of our servers are built with multiple layers of resilience. So losing a hard drive or an operating system drive, it's not the end of the world, but, but losing two or three could be significantly um, damaging to your system. And of course, since the, the server part is, is the engine of your IPCCTV system, it's really important to make sure it's up and running. Um, in the old days, um, you know, we were changing videotapes every 24 hours, so it became really apparent if something was wrong with our system, but now we're, we've, we've migrated across to digital. You can just leave your system running. And sometimes the only time you find out you've got a fault is when you go to come and play back some video and you go, oh, it's not working. So, so Logical Health Check Pro really eliminates that problem. Yeah, this harks back uh, very much to my background working in enterprise IT where I worked in disaster recovery. And, you know, uh, doing systems management on, on tape libraries. Again, you just assume that they were working, but... Uh, a backup isn't a backup until you've tried to restore from it. And very often, anytime you know something's gone wrong is when it's too late to do anything about it. So really interesting stuff. And I like it in particular how you are talking about both the software and the hardware here, because you know, you've got the hardware platform that you already know and trust, but sometimes stuff does go wrong. So having that software assurance layer on top is really, really important. That's what we're talking about with Health Check Pro. Talk to me about training. Talk to me about how easy it is. Do, do you need, I guess it's your integrators. Um, wh what would they need in terms of training to be able to install, to operate and to hand this over to customer environments? You know what? Um, the software has been built with, with simplicity in mind. So, so literally once you're a customer, um, you get your own unique uh, customer hash ID um, and then whenever we build a product for you that that has an ID as well that links to you to you as a customer and what that means is um, and maybe Rob will get on to encryption later but it means you you can see every piece of of hardware you've got in the field from a single place um, and then and then um, yeah, yeah, it, yeah yeah and the, and the other thing is you know our support team's fantastic so what we tend to do is end up doing one-on-one -on -one sessions with people. So myself, one of the tech support guys will log in, uh, do a screen share, show everyone how to set up the software, how to use it. Um, and, and it's j just because it's so easy to use, it probably only takes 15 minutes to right. show someone around and, and get them up to speed pretty quickly. You just need to give us a call or, or email at sales at securelogic.com. Okay. 
Questions coming in. Thank you so much for your questions today. Uh, this is the lifeblood of these Q&A sessions, obviously. I've got loads of questions that I want to ask, but we want to hear from you. So keep them coming in on the, on the platform here. Um, so um, there was a question here about, um, oh, it's, it's just disappeared, so I'll ask something else instead. Um, does it only work with Windows or does it work with other operating systems? I'll, I'll go through these methodically. Well, Rob's the product manager, so he can break you, Rob. <laughs> In short, all of the product that's out there at the moment runs on Windows. Um, however, we have just finished um, a beta version of the Linux um, version of Health Check. Um, okay. Uh, as, you, as you may or may not be aware, the majority of systems in the CCTV industry primarily run, run on Windows at the moment. Um, but there's a few weird and wonderfuls out there where you need a Linux operating system. Um, so yeah. we have developed it for Linux. Uh, it will work on any Linux distribution and give you all the same functionality um, as you would get through the Windows platform. And we've, okay. we've started working quite quite intensely with a few of the video analytics companies recently, and, and that's really where we've seen the move to Linux. A lot of the video analytics reside on Linux, and a lot of the video management softwares reside on Windows. Super. Um, so uh, please, and also if if you are again through the platform here and looking at the Q and A, give a thumbs up to those questions that you particularly would like us to answer. We're doing our best to get through as many of them as we can. Um, so there's a question here about about security. I mean, obviously, the whole point of for our audience today is that we're installing these systems in order to provide security to whatever f f facility. Um, are there does installing this system and particularly your systems management software on top does that in and of itself introduce any uh, additional vulnerabilities uh, and security holes and what are you doing to try and make sure that by enhancing security you aren't also introducing vulnerabilities uh rob i think that's one for you as well uh, rob did sort of cover it in a video but over yeah i mean by the, the software is um, hard coded to only send data out that it won't accept mm -hmm. any incoming connections. It's just not configured in that way. Um, and you'd only need two ports to be open in your firewall and you okay. can set them to only be outgoing ports um, and the system would run absolutely fine. Um, the thing is security is on servers is much less of a problem than it is on workstations because you tend to have most of your issues when you have someone interacting with the machine all the time, opening web browsers, checking emails, and they click on the wrong thing or something like that. And, and typically that's where 99% of um, uh, security problems happen uh, rather than a machine. Once it's sitting there and set up, someone would have to actively attack the IP address that that server is sitting on and, and start scanning for vulnerabilities and providing your windows is up to date. Um, and everything else, you should be pretty safe. You probably, if it's a big company, you have a firewall set up as well. Um, but it, in terms of our software, um, as you mentioned, it, it doesn't introduce any additional vulnerabilities um, as it is. Fine. Good to hear. Um, uh, it's it's selling encrypt from end to end as well, which is the same the same level of encryption that you use for, for internet banking. So yeah, it's as secure as we, we knew when we made this software that this was going to be the primary focus going forward. Of so um, the specific discussions around were like, well, how can we absolutely minimize any chance of, um, of a compromise for, to the server um, with our software on? Um, what uh, and again from the from the same uh, question of that again th thank you for your questions uh, how often does it relate data and update alerts does it use much bandwidth yeah so what's the frequency of of the polling and of the alerting and how much bandwidth does it use uh, so at the moment it updates every five seconds so you'll see an update come into the browser every five mm -hmm. seconds um, the bandwidth is minuscule because if you imagine let's just say a smallish photo that you would see on Facebook or something, that photo is probably 50 times larger in terms of data. We're talking a matter of bytes that we're sending, yeah. um, less than a kilobyte of data um, for each one of those uh, uh, transactions. Cause essentially it's, it's all this text data, you know, uh, CPU percentage is this number and, and it, that sort of thing. So that, that type of data in today's world is absolutely minuscule compared to audio pictures and video yeah. that's online. The exactly. multimedia world in which we live. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, exactly. 
Um, here's a question. Our customer will not allow internet access to their site. Is there a local version? So yes and no. Uh, we, the, the original version of health check was a local version. So okay. if, if, if that's um, something that was uh, a real issue, we could give you the previous version of health check. Um, it doesn't have all the same bells of whistles uh, as, as the current version. Um, however, it does give you the alerts that you can set up and it's very easy to monitor all the components. But we have been asked this question a few times and I can't put a date on it, but something we are looking at doing is a black box solution where mm -hmm. let's say you had 50 servers on one site, um, you would be able to run health check sort of internally on your own LAN. Okay. Uh, that's we've had this question a few times so it is something that we're looking at implementing however uh the roadmap has a lot of items on it at the moment that's good a lot of people are asking you to do things that they want you know being responsive to customers and all of that we are almost out of time um but i just want to put this question to you uh and answer it however however you feel is appropriate and um, the question is how much is it and how can we charge our customers for it? So I'm happy to broaden that to, you know, what's your kind of business model? What's your licensing model around this? That Over you're happy to, to you, talk Robin. About? Okay, well, um, the good news is that, that Logical Health Check Pro is, is a free software. It's <sighs> the life of the product. It ships on every piece of secure logic hardware that goes out. It ha obviously has more functionality when you have server level hardware than it does on a, mm. on a client machine. And it's free for the life of the product and support is free for the life of the product as well. Now, we do have customers because it's a, a value add to be able to offer preemptive and proactive health monitoring to, to their customers. We do have some integrators who will charge for the service. Um, indeed, you know, with our loyal customers, we actually provide them with a what's called a nuke, a, a mini computer that, that they can attach to a monitor and sit and, and monitor all of their customers um, from from a monitor in their office and um, quite often they'll, they'll invite the customers in and say hey look all of these sites we've got out there they're healthy and it's a, it's a real good selling tool for them to say hey look we're proactively monitoring your solution we're going to come and bring a hard drive to you before you even know you've got a problem yep yeah and and that's that's a great way to surprise and delight customers you know fixing problems before they know they've got them exactly. it's always a good thing uh listen we are out of time totally i'm afraid um i'm just going to say before we wrap up if people want to find out more about what you do uh where should they go maybe to ask you some more questions if they have any yeah uh, you can get in touch through our website um you can also email healthcheck at securelogic.com um or you can call our office um there's there's plenty of ways to get in touch we're more than happy to do a demo uh, there's a telephone have... number just behind your right left oh, yeah. arm there i think on the screen uh, my left zero arm. two zero three. There we go. Four seven five <laughs> five seven four three. Perfect. Perfect. You, th uh, you think I'd know with it being painted on the wall <laughs> <laughs> that it's there. Fantastic stuff. Well, listen, thank you. Uh, thank you, everyone who's been able to join us for the last few minutes while we've been plying Rob and Robin with questions. Uh, hope you thank enjoyed you, the rest of the day of IFSEC Tech Talk. See you again in a few minutes time when we'll be hearing from Marshalls. But for now, Rob, Robin, thank you very much. Have a thank great you. day. Cheers. Thanks very much. Bye bye. Cheers, David. Bye bye.